All right, hi, welcome. Um, welcome to Explore UT 2021. Um, this is a, a day in the life of a pre-med student and we have Brianna Middleton, uh, Salvador Car Carrillo and Juan Garcia um, as UT undergrad students. And we also have Lily Martinez who will be the, the lead moderator. And my name is Edna Parra and uh, Lily and I are both from uh, Dell Medical School. Um, we have a lot of questions for you guys. We're very excited. Thank you so much for doing this. Um, first off, we did want to go through some introductions. Just tell us a little bit about yourself and your typical day as an undergrad student. And I'll, sorry, I'll, I'll start with Salvador. Yeah, hello. My name is Salvador Carillo. I'm from Palacios, Texas. Well, it's called Palacios here, but if you read it, it will be Palacios. It's kind of near Victoria, Texas. It's right on the coast. But anyways, this is a really small town and I'm a junior biochemistry major. I'd say a typical life, typical day in my life. Pre before COVID, I would, I would stay on the dorms. I stayed on the dorms my freshman and sophomore year. And I just wake up, go to class and then grab some, a bite to eat at one of the dining halls, J2 most likely. And then I'd study for a good three, four hours maybe go to office hours, depending if I had an exam coming up. And then I would uh, go to Gregory gym to, to round up the night. Nowadays, after COVID, well, during COVID, I stay at home mostly. I, I wake up, go to class on Zoom, which is really a struggle sometimes. But, um, and then I, I go eat with my mom and dad in the kitchen, in the dining room. And I think I, yeah, I still, sometimes I do a workout in the morning or if it's, if I'm pressed for time, I'll try to do it at night, but it's usually my routine. Oh, and volunteering, I'd say, yeah, I'm part of an online volunteering. Uh, it's called Avance. And so sometimes I'd get calls to help a parent or family in need who needs access to a specific program that they're using. And it's, it's a volunteer work, so it's a really cool thing. Thank you. Um, Brianna. Hi, everyone. My name is Brianna Middleton. Um, I am from Fresno, Texas, which is near the outskirts of Houston. Um, I'm a third year biochemistry student. And a typical day in my life looks like um, waking up for class in the morning. Um, but then after that, I grab something to eat. Um, I study. Usually I like to study in the life science library, which is located in the UT Tower. Um, and then I go back to my dorm, um, finish up some things that I probably didn't finish before, and then I'd go to bed. That'd be a typical day of my life um, during COVID, uh, before COVID. Uh, during COVID, um, again, wake up for class, grab a bite to eat, study, and um, finish anything that I hadn't finished before. I go to my two jobs, um, which are all online. And then after that, my day is ending. Awesome, thank you. And Juan. Hi everyone, my name is uh, Juan Garcia. Um, I am a bio major. And I would say that a typical day for me uh, before COVID was, uh, again, like everyone else, waking up, uh, eating breakfast, which I found to be really important um, because if I was hungry, I wouldn't be able to concentrate. Um, I would then either do uh, some schoolwork uh, throughout the day or uh, attend uh, the different classes that I had to go to. Um, and then towards the end of the day, I would either uh, ride the bus home uh, to my apartment or um, if my freshman year, I stayed in, on campus. So I would go eat dinner at one of the dining halls and then uh, go back to my dorm. Um, and then I guess now with COVID, I feel like everyone's situation is the same, the same. Uh, waking up, staying in your room, uh, going to online classes every day, um, and then just trying to find a way to make every day different, um, which is a struggle, but um, it's still possible. I have, I have a question for you, only because all of you mentioned the start of your day starts off with, I eat breakfast. But what does it really look like on campus? What options do you have? Like, what are you guys eating as college students on your own? You're walking, you're I'm imagining you're like zooming to class, trying to get there really quickly when you're on campus. 
and you have to go grab something to eat. What does that look like for campus? Like, what is a dining hall like? Is it like high school cafeteria food? What do y'all think? I can answer that. So uh, on the days I would go in the morning to get breakfast, uh, the dining halls would usually be a little less packed depending on which one you go to. And they, the food is actually really good. It's way better than a school cafeteria food would ever give you. And uh, they have a great selection. They have eggs. I usually always get eggs. That's probably one of my staples, eggs and sausage. They have really good breakfast food. It's not quite as good as IHOP, but I mean, I'm just biased. But uh, yeah, it's really good food, um, really nutritious as well. Yeah, just going off of that, um, the dining hall, it, to me, much better than high school cafeteria food. Um, so I usually go to the dining hall, which they have a variety of options um, to choose from, from pancakes, waffles, granola bars, you name it, they probably have it. So um, there's an array of food options to choose. Uh, but I do have to mention, uh, during my sophomore year, I was like, I don't know why, but obsessed with granola bars. And that was my breakfast. It would fill me up. I get Nature Valley because it had to be Nature Valley. So I'd get me some Nature Valley granola bars and that would kind of fill me up for the day. Um, but yeah, that's all nice. Okay, good. Cool. You want? Um, all right, we'll start with our first question um, and kind of take turns. Uh, but anybody feel free to jump in anytime. Um, so Brianna, I'll start with you. When did you decide that you wanted to go to medical school um, or, or become a doctor? A great question. So I decided that I wanted to go to medical school when I was in seventh grade. In seventh grade, I learned about the cardiovascular system and it just rocked my world. I couldn't believe that our human system was just so extraordinary. Um, so when I learned about the cardiovascular system, it also sparked an interest in um, other systems of the body. And then I started volunteering at the hospital. Um, and with those experiences, that is what really inspired me to um, want to be a medical student. Awesome. Um, also, I have a question for you guys. Now, our audience, I imagine, is a lot of students that are in school and um, they're probably stressing out about how to prepare for college. Um, what do you guys think about the SAT or ACT? How far in advance did you start studying for it? Did you use any particular resources? What do you recommend for students that are right now in the middle of that or preparing to do that? Um, I do know a lot of colleges and universities um, like the University of Texas are um, not um, requiring that you submit an SAT score. Um, it's not uh, because of COVID and a lot of things, but I think some colleges are moving forward. However, I think we should still talk about it because a lot of times when something is optional, it's not always optional, if you know uh, what I mean. So what is your, your take on the SAT? What was it like for you? Um, I would say um, that when I was in high school, I never, no one ever really explained to me the process of applying the uh, college. So I didn't really know what the importance of the SAT or the ACT was until maybe my junior year. Uh, maybe Yeah, maybe my junior year. Um, and then that was closer to the date where um, everyone at the school took it. Um, so my SAT and ACT studying plan was really, um, I didn't really start studying for it um, until after I even took my first one. So I went into the first SAT not studying at all, um, which is something that I, I do regret um, now that I've had that experience um, because the SAT and the ACT are really important, um, not only for you getting admitted to these different universities, but also uh, in terms of um, scholarships and other rewards that you will get uh, with your SAT scores. So I would say um, probably consider studying for the SAT and the ACT as early as possible um, because it is a, a pretty important exam for everyone to take seriously. Um, and also one more thing is, I don't know if they still do this, but there's this thing called the PSAT, um, which is a pre-SAT like exam, um, which also uh, is really important because it simulates the SAT and it also uh, gives you rewards or scholarships also uh, depending on how well you score on that. Um, so, yeah. 
Awesome. Yeah, I've heard that too. I know that it, a lot of schools and for those of you that are preparing to apply for college, I think it's important to look at all of the college and universities websites to see what scores are required for particular scholarships because that's some money right there. If you just prepare for it and study for that SAT, that could really facilitate some of the funding that you're going to need. Um, so I have a question um, following that up. What other resources or individuals helped you during your college application process? So besides the SAT or ACT, you know, essays, who helped you with essays? Where did you get the inspiration and, you know, a mentor, anything like that? Um, have any input on that? I can answer that one. So for me, uh, I'm a first generation student and really the my sister went to college, but she went to a community college. So I knew the process is a little different compared to a four-year university. So really I was the first person in my family to go to a four-year university. And I'd say she was a really big help for me because she was familiar with the process. And also that I, another resource I'd use a lot were actually my parents because that personal statement or that entrance uh, essay that I had to write was talking about what experiences that made me who I am today. And just talking to my parents and listening to their stories and, and I would talk to them like, hey, I'm struggling. I don't even know if I should go to college and just hearing what they would say to me and just their wisdom is what gave me a lot of my inspiration to write that essay. And for that essay, I'd recommend getting a lot of people, or not a lot, but more than two people at least to review your essay and to give you good feedback and someone who's going to be critical, not just a yes man or something. You know, you need someone who's actually going to give you good advice because that's what a lot of people read on those admissions, uh, um, admission tables. And I'd say also as well, I know that there's like a huge stigma about not applying to UT or at least to like a lot of those big universities because if you're not in the top 10, it's really hard to get in. But I'd say my, I was actually helping my little brother earlier this year to apply to UT and he wasn't in the top 10. And I would just through that essay, I believe, like helping him sitting down with him and reviewing that essay over and over with him and making, making sure what he was saying was really something of substance, not just any, you know, uh, copy and paste formulaic essay. I feel that's what made him stand out and he, he did get accepted. So that essay is what really sets you apart. And that's your voice. It's your opportunity to share your voice on that application, not just be another number. That's excellent. Thank I love you. that answer. And congratulations to your little brother. You're a great mentor. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. All right. I have cool. I have another question. Um, let's see. Oh, this is this is okay. This is a good one. How did you become overcome being homesick and the guilt, if you felt any guilt, of leaving home? So like leaving little brother behind, you know, uh, mom and dad or your loved ones, your family? Um, how has that been for you? Are you, are you still dealing with homesickness? Yeah, I can probably answer a little bit of that one too. So for me, uh, I struggled a lot my first year and it was really hard to meet, for me to get adjusted to that because since I was you know, first gen, I didn't really have anyone up here. And then uh, I struggled a lot. I was feel homesick. I had a roommate, but it wouldn't, he wouldn't, I, we just came from different worlds, so I couldn't relate to him, and it was uh, it was a hard process to deal with. And so what I found was just calling home, you know, at least once or twice a day helped a lot. Asking my mom, hey, what do you have for dinner today? You know, just simple things like that bring you that feeling that you're back at home. You're you're still in touch with your people. And um, really, the only way I got over feeling homesick was just through time. You know, just realizing that. This is where I have to be. It's not that guilt is real, but it, it's kind of a little unjustified because, and the reason that I say that is because, you know, it's, you're doing this for you and you're doing this to, you know, make a better future for yourself. And in my mentality, the way I saw it was, I'm okay, I'm leaving and I'm making this sacrifice right now, but that's only because I want to go back and give back to my family, my community who have given so much for me. And so, the way you can justify that, like you're, you're feeling that, oh, you're having so much fun over here at UT, but it's really just mo a moment in time where you're experiencing all these feelings and that way you can come out, be successful and give back. Yeah, that's a great answer. Thanks for sharing that, Salvador. 
Thank you. Yeah, and I uh, I just, I had a similar experience, Salvador. And I think it took me like a year and a half to finally be comfortable when I came to Austin. So it was hard, but I, I don't regret sticking to it. So that's one thing. Uh, next question. So how do you fund your education and manage your finances in school? Does anybody want to Yes, I'll go ahead and answer that question. So um, how I fund my school uh, tuition is through financial aid. And then from the remaining balance, I use loans. Um, so oh, another thing I want to add about loans is I know we hear loans, people think, oh, that's, that's bad. You know, you don't need to take out loans, but it's not a, a bad thing as long as you make the necessary payments to pay it back. It will be fine. Um, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, and it pays my tuition, so it's going to pay off. Um, and I also have two jobs, um, so I've also been using that to like pay for things such as like groceries or clothes that I would like to buy. Um, but yeah, that's what I see. I can oh, add to you. that a little bit. I know uh, there's a recent program at ET where if your family makes below, I believe it's sixty-five thousand a year, you're able to get free tuition. So that's definitely a, a big help for those low-income families who are coming in. And um, the way I funded my education a lot through, was through uh, financial aid and also those scholarships. Since I come from a small town, there's, there's more opportunities for me to get scholarships that are less competitive. I would say that you know, there's less applicants going for those specific scholarships. So I'd say if you're from a small town, go look at those local scholarships. Those are the ones that are, you're really gonna have a greater chance of getting instead of those really nationwide ones. Yeah, that's great advice. All of those um, small ones add up and it's your, your local community helping to support your education. So it's, it's, um, it's always great to see that. Ah, I have the next question. Okay. Uh, this is a multi-question question. question. Um, what is your major and how did you decide what major you were gonna do? Yes, great question. So my major is biochemistry. And um, there's actually a funny story to how I actually chose the major of biochemistry. So for as long as I could ever know, I have always loved biology. I that was my subject. I did very well in high school in biology. So I thought that is what I will pursue. No changes to that, right? And then after my freshman year in college, um, I completed not only biology one and two, but also chemistry one and two. And um, I also realized, man, I also like chemistry too. And I was like, okay, so if I like biology and chemistry, I guess biochemistry. So I started doing research on what biochemistry is and is it really the perfect combination of both biology and chemistry? And it was, um, and that's how I changed my major from biology to biochemistry, which is what it is now. And has this major made it easier or harder to prepare for medical school? Great question. So in my case of being a biochemistry major, I would say that it has made things just a little bit easier just because the courses um, that are required to major in biochemistry are very similar to the courses that are needed to apply to medical school. Um, but that doesn't necessarily mean you have to major in biology. I have a lot of friends that are non-science majors and it is so easy to um, incorporate those required courses that you need for medical school into their schedule. That's great. Um, uh, thank you for explaining biochem too, because that was always like, hmm, how does someone decide to go into biochem? It seems so, you know, but yeah. And also, I mean, you can change your major, right? Um, after your first year, if you decide, you know, I don't want to do chemistry or bio, you can always change your major. It's not like a super complicated process. Uh, you know, I think through your years at UT or at any college or university are meant to explore and, you know, kind of widen your, your knowledge base and, and kind of go out there. We certainly know a lot of students in our programs that are non-science majors that are pre-med and, and it's totally doable. Um, it's nothing crazy. That, uh, I think the university does a great job in facilitating um, that for students, right, to be able to do a multiple, you know, multiple number of interests at the same time. So that's really good to hear. Um, I have a question for you guys um, that has come up. 
What has been the biggest struggle so far for you um, on this journey into medical school, whether it's academic or non-academic? Um, what's been your biggest struggle and how did you overcome it, if you have? Um, I could say, I could talk a little bit about that. Um, I would say that the greatest struggle for me personally was, um, I guess, getting adjusted to life uh, at UT, uh, mainly due to the fact that, um, at least where I came from, my neighborhood, my community, I, it's a completely different world um, that you have to, you know, get, get used to um, from, from day to night. Uh, so as soon as you arrive, you're, you're expected to be able to be able to uh, use the information that you use, you learned before um, in, in a really efficient manner. But the reality is that most, most of the time, some students don't really have the same amount of information or the same exposure uh, to some ideas. So it, this, this is kind of what I experienced, uh, which, which was difficult for me, um, just because playing catch up uh, and being able to uh, relate to some of my professors and some of my classmates was hard at the beginning. Um, and this also can sometimes lead to uh, the imposter syndrome, uh, which is something that a lot of students here at UT uh, face with, especially during those first years, um, which is the fact that you feel that you don't belong in a specific environment or you don't belong at UT because you don't see, you don't match the, the perfect or the perfect persona that um, is characterized by a UT student. Um, so that idea also plays a significant role in one of those struggles that I faced um, when I uh, got into uh, UT. Uh, so facing that uh, with, the rec with finding out how you become a good candidate for medical school can also uh, be very challenging uh, because most of the time some of these lower income ethnic minority students don't really know what it takes to be a good candidate for medical school. Um, you're just kind of thrown in there and expected to know everything at the ins and out of how to, how to get there. Um, so I would say that it takes real persistence and desire to prevail, um, but it is possible for everyone to, to do it. Um, it just takes a little bit more um, desire, like I said earlier. Yeah, and this is interesting to hear, Juan, because I know you to be an incredibly talented student. I mean, I never would have guessed any of these that these were your struggles because you're incredibly talented. You're a, a born leader from what I see. Um, and you always throw yourself out there for any opportunity, um, anything that's available that you can participate in. You're one of the first ones, um, as well as Brianna and Salvador. So. Um, you know, despite, I think, the, the barriers that are, that are set up sometimes, you, you guys are all doing a fantastic job. So um, keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, my question, um, being a pre-med is hard work and difficult. How do you stay focused and motivated? That's a great question. It's really hard sometimes to be a pre-med, especially I feel it's been even harder through a virtual setting. Getting up and just sitting at a desk for hours is, is draining. And sometimes you do it at the same time, you know, you wouldn't even get up out of bed. You just stay in bed and go to class, which I'd say is a plus, but either way, um, I'd say one of the ways to stay motivated is finding a good balance between your, your student life and your at home life or, uh, you know, your, private life and the way I can I have been able to achieve that is kind of just hanging out with my family with my folks at home and since I'm still at home I, I try to find at least an hour a day where I'm able to go in the living room and just talk with them just chat with them see what's going on because even though I'm at home I'm, I'm I still miss out on some good things that happen around my other extended family for example and um, I'd say I have, I'm really close to my to my brother and we try to spend a good amount of time together throughout the day, even if we're just sitting doing work silently. But I mean, we still feel that we're connected, I guess, in a way. And at nights, we try to watch a good TV show, at least one episode. I've been watching Veep. I don't know if y'all have seen that. It's a good show. <laughs> it's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, I'd say a good way to just 
trying to find those things that make you happy that release those those endorphins or those hormones that you those feel good hormones so a good way is also working out you know going on a run on a walk lifting some weights um yeah those are some good ways for me to release that stress that I have sometimes and just going off of that um for me in particular I am a biochemistry major um but I realized something really early on I mean it's my like college career. Um, I remember my first semester in college, um, being a biology major, um, I wasn't involved in any type of organization. I just was, it was just school. And it was really hard for me to stay focused, stay motivated, and um, to stay disciplined. And I didn't know what the source of that was. I was like, does this mean I shouldn't major in biology, biochemistry? I did not know. And then I changed things my spring semester of freshman year. I started involving myself in organizations. And the organizations that I, were, that I was in were all centered around diversity, equity, and inclusion. And that's when everything changed for me. I became more focused, I became more disciplined um, and, and much more. So the thing that really does keep me motivated and um, focused is involving myself in organizations or even minor programs or certificates like such as the Social Media Quality Health and Policy Certificate program that I'm in has really, really helped me um, stay motivated and remind me of what my true values are. So that's what I would say to answer that question. That's great advice. I think what I heard from Salvador and Brianna, although two different sources of motivation, but they all center around having a, a community of support, right? A community either around organizations or a community of support around family um, and to not really, you know, although we are, you know, staying safe at home, this idea of isolating yourself um, is really not the healthiest way, right? To be successful in the four years, you're gonna have to maybe put yourself out there a little bit, try new things, check out new programs, um, reach out, um, but I think that that idea of having a good community of support around you is really important to being successful, especially at a large university. And let's be honest, pre-med, pre-health is cutthroat. I mean, it is competitive, right? No one wants to share their notes. No one wants to help you study. But there are those good people out there like these three um, that will help you study, will help you connect, will hook you up with different opportunities. So that's good to hear. Do I have the next question? Okay, hold on. Um, da, 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 da. Oh, this one, yes. This is a great one. What is something, one thing or two things, whatever, that you wish you knew before you got to college? Like if someone had told you this when you were a junior or a senior or a sixth grader even, like that you're in college now, you're like, oh my gosh, if only someone had told me. What is that one piece? of information or advice or whatever? Um, I, could, I could start us off. Um, I could say that I think one thing that I, I wish I knew before getting into college was that um, it's okay to fail. Um, that's a really important uh, thing to realize, especially um, when, when you're growing up and going like past your 18, past high school, your past high school years. It's really important to realize that it's okay to fail um, whether it be failing an exam or failing uh, not not being not being accepted into these different programs that you're applying to throughout your uh, college career, that idea of being able to keep on going even after uh, the rejection or the failure is really important for not only pre med students but for all the students. Um, whether you're a, a engineering major or a psychology major, this idea of you know, persistence and perseverance is something that drives you to succeed in life, um, not only in school, but in life in general. Um, because if you see every failure as, you know, the end, all, the end of the world, you're never going to get past that barrier. So it's really important for someone to self-reflect on, on that uh, rejection or whatever, whatever event it may be. Uh, to self-reflect and, you know, tell yourself, um, how, how can I do better the next time? Or what do I need to do to either pass that exam or get accepted into that program the second time? Uh, because personally, I could tell you that, you know, I applied to like three or four different programs my freshman year and I didn't get into a single one. 
Um, but then going into my sophomore year, I told myself, like, you know, like, this isn't the end of the world. You know, I still got another whole year um, that I could, you know, change things and be a better person, be a better candidate uh, for these programs. Um, so that's kind of what also, you know, addresses to one of the questions that we asked previously that that drove me uh, to keep on going to, to, you know, to keep on the pre-med track was uh, the, the ability and the desire to see what, uh, what capabilities I could develop in the future um, by not giving up today. Um, so that's something that I believe is really important for everyone to know before getting into college. I agree. That was really good, Juan. We're gonna pull from that. <laughs> good stuff. I think it's important for students to hear that, right? Because you have a lot of very high achieving students coming to campus and then you fail your first exam and you start to doubt yourself, but that's not the case. Um, you know, I, I think I ask this all the time of my, of my undergrads, I'll always ask them, how many of you failed your first exam? Well, first I ask them, how many of you graduated top 10%? They all raise their hand. Then I asked them, how many of you failed your first exam? And they all raised their hand. <laughs> but they're successful, you can get past it. That's part of the grit and the resilience and the beauty of going through this journey of, of college, right? Like you learn so much about yourself. You get to learn so many things about yourself that you didn't know you had in you. So kudos to that. And just adding on to that, I also wish I would have known how unnecessary it is to compare yourself to others just because everyone's path to success is very different. I remember um, my freshman year in college, I was constantly doing that, thinking that I was a failure and that I wasn't fit to be in a college of natural sciences major. And um, I remember in one of my chemistry classes, I didn't do well at all on like the first two exams, but my other classmate did. And we made the same grade in the class. We made still, still a good grade in the class. So to me, it taught me, it doesn't matter about who made this grade or who made that grade. We all end up at the same place and how we get there doesn't matter. Yep. This can all look different. Yeah, I think that's um, a great way to, oh, sorry. Oh, no, sorry, Lily. Um, I think that's a great way to kind of lead into the, the following question was, what resources does, does UT provide for pre-med and pre-health students that enable you to kind of, you know, seek out how to improve, you know, on the next exam or how to improve yourself on paper to be a better candidate, right? How do you, what are the resources that you have found that are helpful at UT uh, that have led you to where you are today? Because now you're all third year students, right? Um, pretty soon heading into the application cycle for medical school. It's a great question. Um, so one resource that really did help me um, it's a small community program. It's called Women in Natural Sciences. I've been in it since freshman year. And the um, perks of being in small community programs is that you're able to have um, easy access to things such as mentors, um, reserve courses, and much more to help you amidst your journey um, if you're planning on going to professional school. So because I was in that program, I was able to um, meet with a mentor who is now in medical school, and I am still in contact with her to this day. And I literally ask her any question related to medical school or undergrad, because um, she's been a great resource for me. And um, another thing that I think would, was a great resource for me to help me um, to persevere and to um, be committed to the academic process of, of being a pre-med student is reaching out to the Singer Learning Center. Now, um, it was like a first time for me being like in a tutoring session. So I was like, I don't need tutoring. I just need to study harder. But I had to be honest with myself and know that it was there was nothing wrong with asking for help. Um, it's actually a courageous thing to do. So I started going to the Singer, Singer Learning Center um, and they have a host of tutors there to help you with any questions or homework that you may have. And um, my grade is just start getting better and better after that. So. I would go there. And it's free for students. So it's a great resource that I think all UT students should use. That's great. Juan Salvador? I can add to that. So I like what Brianna says. Just There's a lot of resources to help you on campus. It's just if you're willing to 
allow those resources to help you, you know, if you're willing to go out and seek that help, it's especially important now through a virtual setting. I found that the, the health professions office is a really great resource for, for undergrads who are seeking the pre-med or any pre-health path, really. Um, I'm right now, currently I'm, I'm kind of at a little crossroads. I'm not too sure where I'm going to go after this in terms of the application cycle. I'm kind of debating some things. So I'm going to have a, an appointment with my pre-med advisor in a couple of weeks and they're going to be able to help me with my questions and because they have a lot more experience than I than I do. And so they're able to help with that sort of question about whether if you're a good applicant or what where your application needs more strength. And so I'd say the health professions office is a really great resource. And they have Wednesdays where you can just walk in, ask a quick question and then you're out. It's, it's just a really great resource that they're able to help. And uh, I'd say JAMP is another great resource that you can learn about in that office. And I'm sure Juan knows a lot about JAMP too. And it's a, it's a great program. Awesome. Um, okay, so I think that's the end of our formal questions. Um, unless you guys want to, you know, have any other input, last uh, last uh, tips or tricks or anything like that. Um, this is your chance. If not, then we can kind of go into our lightning ro round when I'll just kind of ask a question. Everybody answers quickly. If you take too long, I'll skip you, but I'll come back to you. <laughs> um, <laughs> so... All right, we can start. Um, your favorite campus hangout. And hold on, I'm sorry. Before I do that, we'll do Juan, Salvador, Brianna, just because that's kind of the order. So we're not jumping at each other. So favorite campus hangout. Um, I would say my favorite campus hangout. Uh... <laughs> Move. Moving on. <laughs> uh, PCL, I guess. Which is a library. A library. <laughs> <laughs> okay, actually we'll do Lily too. You can my favorite campus hangout? Yeah. Uh the cafeteria. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Salvador. I'd say for me it'd be the turtle pond, which is kind of where the tower is, the main UT tower. It's just really cool to go out there when you're stressed, look at some turtles, see what they're doing. They have little families with them and I don't know, it just takes you away from that stress of being a student. Um, my favorite campus hangout is the Union, which is kind of like the student center. I do have to say, I love walking through those, that kind of arch of trees on the main lawn, like when they're in full bloom. Oh, that's just, I feel like I'm at like some Ivy League school or something, because, you know, it kind of <laughs> looks like the movies where you're just like walking through the middle of trees. I do love that walk. It's very, very uh, serene. Okay, next question must have a tire or gadget for classes? Uh, a suit and tie. A suit and tie, okay. For me- I always have a blanket because it's always cold. Same. Yeah, yeah, it can get cold. Um, I'd say for me, it's a little counterintuitive, but uh, headphones, a good set of headphones goes a long way. You know, even if you're in lecture, just put one earbud in, put the volume really low. It just, it helps me focus on the lecture. Even when I'm going to class, walking around, just kind of like a little soundtrack to the to your life in a way. I would say my pencil pouch. My pencil pouch has all my pencils, my pens, and my flare pens, which have actually changed my life. Like I color coding is at a whole nother level now. So I would definitely say my pencil pouch. All right. Um, your favorite note-taking device, you know, it could be a notebook, a pencil, um, a recorder. Um. Um, I guess I, I, I'm really old school and I just do pen and pencil every, every time. Uh, it just helps me memorize things faster than typing. Um, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for, for me, I'd, I'm kind of with Juan, you know, I'm a little old school. I, I just have this pencil. It's my, it's my lucky pencil. I've had it since freshman year. It, I don't know, it's just a little dumb sentimental value, I guess, that I've taken a lot of exams with it. But yeah, it's, it's more what I do. I would say flare pens for me. I tried them out last year and it has been wonderful ever since. They're basically, they look like markers, but they're actually pens and they come in a variety of colors. So my flare pens, I have to have them. I've never What's seen them, but I'm, yeah, I'm gonna Google well, them. I yes. bought some. I bought some when I was an undergrad over 10 years ago. 
and I still have the pack and they still have ink. Yes, we love to see it. See, it's multiple <laughs> pens. I love uh, that. I don't know about the one pencil for four years. <laughs> pen. <laughs> what no you exactly. need at least 50 different colors well, at least yeah at least you know could be different ballpoints different <laughs> I, I don't understand i'm you know i love that <laughs> oh, oh all right and one thing you have to do to survive through college just eat clearly but something that you really <laughs> think that you need to do uh, for me personally, I need to sleep. If I don't sleep, I can't concentrate at all. Um, so nine, nine, eight hours a day, what I do personally. For me, I would say, you know, it's obvious, but water, but um, I'm a really, I'm really into water. You know, I haven't really had soda often in I don't know, the past two years. So a good water bottle is a great thing to have. It's essential, I'd say. You, especially if you're on campus and walking around and it's hot, just having like a water bottle in your hand that keeps your water cold is it's really great. Yeah, this is also obvious as well, but I have to say eating because if I do not eat, I, will, I won't I start studying. I will do nothing unless I eat. So at least some good snack or something so that I can be productive. Yeah. You're not you when you're hungry. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's a true, very true statement. <laughs> very true. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, uh, that's that's the end. I really, really want to thank all of you. I know you guys are extremely busy. Um, thank you so much for your time. This was great. I I, I think we're probably even going to do more of these. Um, so we want to follow up with all of you. Thank you, and um, you know. Definitely see you next year, everybody. Thank you for joining and see you next year at Explore UT 2022. So in person, but we'll probably still have this video. So <laughs> thank you. Bye, Bye. Thank you.